2,000 years ago, it would be actually on the Temple Mount where Jews would gather and come as close as they can to the presence of God. Why is everyone so upset? Mary, he was in there. You were supposed to be riding in the caravan with Uncle Abaita. I was supposed to be with my father. Then why weren't you? I was. You should have seen him. He was teaching when I found him. The rabbis, the scribes, the scholars, they could not believe their ears. They barely let us be. Didn't you know I must be in my father's house? It is too early for all this. If not now, when? Just help us get through all of this with you. Maybe we should get going before they make a formal inquiry. Hmm? Jesus, please don't do that again. Hmm? Yes, Abba. May I read? We'll see. Hmm? Come now, we've got a long journey. What are you going to do for your mother for this transgression, huh? I'm going to make him rub your feet. Abba. <laughs> We're here at the heart of Jerusalem, directly behind us, what would be considered the most holy site to the Jewish people. And we have this beautiful scene where Mary and Joseph are trying to find young Jesus. Joseph thinks that Jesus is with Mary. Mary thinks that Jesus is with Joseph. They realize he's not there. They come rushing back to Jerusalem to try and find him. And all of a sudden they find that he's been on the Temple Mount. Teaching. Teaching. A 12-year-old, that's what a 12-year-old does. The Torah scholars, the teachers are amazed at the questions Jesus is asking and also the answers that he's giving as a 12-year-old. I also think it's amazing that Jesus is teaching in the temple at this age because there is a big crowd of Jews. There are, you know, scholars of Jews that make pilgrimage and the locals of the Jerusalemites. And they are stunned by, as you mentioned, the questions and the answers of Jesus. And as we move into Luke chapter 20, Jesus is a fully grown adult. He's now teaching in the temple, teaching on the temple mount, in the temple court, and, and people are flocking to him now. Religious leaders come to challenge Jesus, and what they'll find is once again, Jesus knows how to ask very, very truthful questions to get to the heart of the intention of both men, believers and non-believers alike of who he is. They realize they can't outsmart Jesus, and all of a sudden they think it's best not to ask him any more questions. So he goes from a boy that they're fascinated with to a man which they wish they could get rid of, but they can't. He will throw the question, it's like he throws the ball right back at them. Yes. Putting them in a spot which is, in a way, he speaks our language. He knows he's immersed in the, in the, in the prophets of Israel. Mm -hmm. He knows the Torah, he knows the oral law, and yet, we cannot question him, question him without him throwing it back at us. Mm. That will be a revolutionary teaching on Temple Mount. Nate, I could just imagine like yeah. where that Dome of the Rock stands today, about two and a half times higher. The sanctuary, the midst of the Jewish temple, you know, and Jesus is teaching and people just gathering and gathering mm. and gathering. I think about those words that Jesus spoke on this Temple Mount and I think about the practical implication of what Jesus was pointing to, that the Messiah is a divine figure that is not the son of David, but something far greater because even David was waiting for him. But more than that, that this period of time where the son is sitting at the right hand of the father, waiting for him to make his enemies a footstool for his feet. We are waiting for the return of the Messiah. Yeah. The Jewish people are waiting for the arrival of the Messiah. Both belief systems are waiting ultimately for the same event. And that event is known to happen right here in front of us. When the Messiah does come, he's going to ultimately come through the Eastern Gate, which has been closed up. He's gonna come onto that Temple Mount and he's going to claim his kingdom once again. And when Jesus is departing from the temple on this day, his disciples will marvel yes. at the temple. <laughs> 
and it'll be Jesus prophesying that moment saying that not a single stone will be standing on another. Now, when we look at it today, we have to admit that Jesus' words were accurate, they were correct. And just like Jeremiah, Jesus prophesied about the destruction of the second temple as opposed to the first. 40 years later, the Romans would come, they would besiege this city and they would ultimately destroy the temple. And 2000 years ago, it would be actually on the Temple Mount where Jews would gather and come as close as they can to the presence of God. It's sometimes hard to actually swallow everything that you're experiencing here as a, as a Bible reader, as a lover of God's Word, and then actually standing in the place where so much more has to unfold. And so much more does unfold every single time you come here. Mm -hmm. Something new, something, another understanding, another angle of the reading of Scripture, of both Old Testament and New Testament, and understanding just how much this place has to offer.